a bed. Oh, Eric, I feel so unbearably happy. <laughs> happy and whole. <laughs> I can't even remember what we saw at the theater tonight. I just sat there and felt the crowd all around me. And I kept thinking how wonderful it was to be, to be with people again, you know, to be out and alive. Oh, darling, come on, dance with me. Oh, no, it's way past your bedtime. Oh, please. Absolutely not. You've had quite enough excitement for your first night out. You've got to give that heart of yours a chance to keep up with your feet, you know. Come on, get ready for bed. Oh, but you promised champagne in front of the fire before we went to bed. You never forget anything, do you? <laughs> I asked Lydia to put a bottle on ice before we went out. You could charm the birds right out of the trees. I'll get it. No. Just like old times. I'll go down and get the champagne, and you light the fire. Hmm? All right, but uh, take it easy on those stairs. I already got up them once tonight by myself. Thank you. you think perhaps that you actually caught some glimpse into the future or perhaps you might suspect some grisly plot against your sanity now please no snap judgments you might be right and then there'd be no need for you to suffer through the frightening ordeal as time runs out for Mildred Beaumont played by Judith Evelyn her husband Eric played by Tom Helmore and her young sister Lydia as played by Adele Mara. What's that? You think you have the answer. Oh, 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 don't be too sure. Because I warn you, as sure as my name is Boris Karloff, you're in for a terrifying surprise. And if you're tempted to scream, just sit back and follow this advice. Where is it? 
darling, what are you looking for? I saw it. A wreath was in front of it. And an organ was playing a requiem. I saw it. Mildred, stop it. It was horrible. My own coffin. Nonsense. Look around you. There's no coffin here. But I saw it. You're overtired. It, you must have imagined it. No. It was real. You don't believe me because you don't want to believe me. Mildred! Eric, what's wrong with her? Don't ask questions. Go and phone for Dr. Harris, quick. All right. No! Let go of me! It was real. Somebody's trying to play a horrible trick. Listen to me. There's no coffin here, no wreath. Nothing but what you see. Do you understand? Oh, oh Eric, Eric, help me. There, help of me. course I will. Come on. darling. No temperature, that's a good sign. You hungry? Huh? Well, the doctor expected that. Here, take two of these. Well, darling, you must take them. The doctor left strict orders. Doctor? What doctor? Bartoli. Your Dr. Harris is away. Bartoli is looking after his patients. You had quite a session with him last night. I was very impressed with him. Morning. How's the patient? She won't take her medicine. Don't blame her. Who wants pills on an empty stomach? Coffee's what she needs. You look like you could use some, too. Sat up all night. Wouldn't leave your side. The dear, loving lamb. Excuse me. Pop your pillows a bit. There. Here you are, dear. Thank you, Lydia. Well, you certainly gave us a scare last night. For a minute there, you actually had me believing you saw your own funeral. Lydia! What? We won't discuss last night. At least until she's stronger. The doctor doesn't want her even to think about it. But I want to discuss it, Eric. Now. Well, if you ask me, I think that doctor's making a big mystery out of nothing. I said we won't discuss it, Lydia. She's not a child. She can face a simple fact. There's nothing so mysterious about what she saw last night. Listen, Mildred, I was against you going out so soon. You were overtired when you came home, and then you went downstairs in the dark. Well, I'm not surprised you had a nightmare. This house is frightening enough in the daytime, but at night it's... Darling, when you're better, I wish you'd get rid of it. You know we can't keep any help. It's so big. Have you quite finished? For now. I'll bring your breakfast up in a few minutes, dear. I'm sorry, darling. I don't mean to quarrel with Lydia, especially at a time like this. I only want what's best for you. So does she, I suppose. It's just that we can't seem to get together, that's all. Eric, supposing I told you that I don't remember your Dr. Bartoli, would you think I was going out of my mind? So that's why you're misbehaving this morning. You haven't answered my question. I'd say it's perfectly normal. You were in shock when he got here last night. He gave you a sedative before he left. It's not surprising you don't remember much about it. I don't remember anything about it. Well, there's still nothing to be alarmed about. You simply buried a very frightening memory in your subconscious. It'll come to the surface eventually. I remember the frightening part. I remember the coffin. And I remember my funeral wreath. 
It's the doctor. I just can't remember him. Darling, I've just told you why. Eric, what did the doctor say? Well, darling, your heart hasn't improved the way we hoped it would. But that doesn't mean that it won't. With rest and quiet, you've every chance of a complete recovery. I'm not worried about my heart. It's what happened in the drawing room that puzzles me. I know I saw a coffin. I know I saw a funeral wreath. And I did hear music. Mildred, you must get hold of yourself. I can't seem to convince you that it's all in your mind. When the doctor comes this afternoon, you talk to him. I'm sure he will. Now, come on, drink your coffee. You know, I could use some of that myself. I'll be right back. yourself until you see the surprise I have for you. There. Champagne. Champagne? Oh, what's the matter, dear? I thought you loved it. <laughs> for breakfast? <laughs> breakfast? It's seven o'clock, supper time. Oh, dear. Look for yourself. Mildred. <laughs> Please. Please, dear. I meant these to be on your tray. Well, what's going on? I don't know. Mildred, what is it? Mildred, answer me. She said something about champagne for breakfast. That's not true. Darling, I heard you. Now, the way you're saying it, as though I thought it was breakfast time, as though, as though I'd forgotten the whole day. Of course you haven't forgotten the whole day. Whatever put such a ridiculous idea into your head? Mildred... It's one thing to forget the doctor last night. You were terribly upset. But this afternoon... Well, don't you remember the visit? Leave her alone. Of course she remembers. There's no reason why she shouldn't. She hasn't had any sedation today. Then let her say it. Stop badgering her. You do remember, don't you, darling? Yeah. Never scare me like that again. You're just as sane as I am. Lydia! I'm sorry. She is my sister. And I was only trying to help. Oh. Come on, darling, you must eat something. I'm, I'm not hungry, really. Well, Mildred, you've got to keep up your strength. There. Now, doesn't that look good? Oh, please, pl please take it away. I, I just can't <coughs> eat anything now. All right, darling, I won't force you. Eric, Dr. Bartoli wants to speak to you. All right. I'll, uh, I'll take it in the hall.
right, nurse. Put Dr. Bartoli on. Uh, Mr. Beaumont? Yes, doctor. Just checking before I leave my office. How is she? Well, I'm not certain, but I think she's had another memory lapse. I see. Well, if it occurs again, phone me immediately. Well, doctor, if she continues to have these mental blocks, what can we do? It's difficult to say. She'd have to be institutionalized for advanced treatment. She may snap right out of this and never have a recurrence. As I explained to her this afternoon, everything depends on how she cooperates. I see. Well, thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. things. Eric. Oh, Eric. There, oh, there, there. You're going to be fine. Just fine. not supposed to leave your room. You're not strong enough yet. No, oh, please, don't send me back. It's only for a little while. All right, dear. Lady says you're leaving this morning. Another business trip? That's right. How long will you be gone? A week. If something happens... No, nothing will. Lydia knows where I'll be. I'll miss you so. I'll be bored to death. Oh, no, you won't. I'm having a piano put up in your room. You can start playing again. I've already discussed it with the doctor. You've made splendid progress in the last ten days. He thinks it'll be very good therapy for you. <laughs> Can't I work in the drawing room? Darling, he doesn't want you to go in the drawing room until you're completely well. Why? Well, you wouldn't want to put yourself through another ordeal, would you? Do you think it might happen again? I don't think so, but why take chances? Now, promise me you won't go in that room until you're well. Promise? Hmm. Good. Now, you better attend to these. I've uh, gone over all the bills and written all the checks. All they need is your signature. I must go pack a bag. I was just going upstairs with these. I see you broke out of your cell. Yes, I came down to see Eric. If you ask me, which you haven't, you're begging for trouble. Trouble? <laughs> Making him come to you for every nickel. But we've always had this arrangement. When you were a big star on the concert circuit and Eric was managing you, that was one thing. But you married the boy. With all my worldly goods at the end of, remember? I think that ought to work both ways. But Eric never mentioned it. Every time he chases out of here after another pathetic little rainbow, you're that much closer to losing him. I can't believe it. Mildred, you know how I feel about Eric. But you're in love with the man. And if you want to keep him, cut your bank book down the middle. Give him half, outright. No strings attached. But... <laughs> He never allow it. You know how proud he is. <laughs> so you uh, save his precious pride. Don't give him a chance to allow or disallow. Simply call your lawyer and do it.
Well, look who's home. I was beginning to think you struck it rich and kept going. How is she? Happy as a nightingale, listen. She's been at it since you left. Something new she's composing for you. How's the trip? Fine, thanks. Fine, like all the other trips? <laughs> Never mind. I've got good news for you. Her lawyer brought it this afternoon. What? No, thank you. Said I thought, oh, I thought the most horrible things. But you're here, you've come back to me. Well, of course. Whatever made you think I wouldn't? Oh, it doesn't matter now. You're home. Eric, I've got a surprise for you. Oh? But before I give it to you, I, I want you to promise that you won't be sensitive about it. Why should I be? Well, it, it, it's something that I should have done when we were first married, but... Well, darling, you know how I am about anything to do with money. What is it, Mildred? This. It's a property settlement. I had Earl Sachs draw it up the day you left. Now everything I have is yours. Everything? Everything. Without any conditions or exceptions. Eric, what are you doing? Uh, this is Eric Beaumont. I want to speak to Mr. Sachs, please. Hello, Mr. Sachs. I'm fine, thank you. About that property settlement my wife had you draw up. Well, it's very generous of her, but I'm afraid I can't accept it. Please destroy our office copy. No, don't send it back to Mrs. Beaumont. Destroy it. Thank you. I think I know who put you up to this, but for the sake of harmony, we'll say no more about it. Is that clear? Yes, Eric. some good news for you. Good news? Yes. I phoned the doctor today, gave him a progress report. Your imprisonment is over. You can have the run of the house, even the drawing room. Well, darling, I thought you'd be happy. You've been after me for days to talk to the doctor. I am happy, really. Mildred, you're not keeping anything from me, are you? No. No more hallucinations. Not even a nightmare. <laughs> Good. You know, I think you're strong enough now that even if you did have one, you could destroy it. Destroy it? Yes, by recognizing it for what it is, like a, like a dark reflection in a mirror. If you get up your courage and look closely, everything that's not real disappears. Ah, oh, but let's not talk about unpleasant things tonight. But I... Shh. To us, the way things used to be and will be again.
real. mustn't forget her precious pink camellias. certain, but I think she's had another memory lapse. I see. Turn well, that thing off. Mildred must have been sick not to recognize your voice. And this bus she had made of herself, it really came in handy, didn't it? You know, I think I look more like Mildred than she did. Where's the record? Can't I at least keep the organ music for a souvenir? You really enjoyed it, didn't you? Darling. I get a great deal of satisfaction of doing any job well. Don't you think you better call an ambulance? My sister's collapsed. She's not breathing. <laughs>
how I hate black. Look, darling, more sympathy cards. Isn't that nice? I noticed there's a niche reserved for you at the mausoleum. It was her idea, so we'd always be together. Sweet. Eric, listen. Heartfelt sympathy on the loss of your dear husband, Eric Beaumont. Who sent that? It's not signed. Well, there must have been an envelope. I don't see one. Someone probably read the obituary notice and got things mixed up. Heartfelt sympathy on the loss of your dear husband. <laughs> something <gasps> what's the matter with you didn't you hear her hear what mildred playing oh don't be ridiculous now oh, that's enough tantrum for one day lie down mother thinks you ought to sleep it off darling don't leave me oh eric could you help me please help yes me. yes I'm right across the hall if you need me lydia don't go. Stay with me. This is who different. brought it? I don't know. Well, it's just arrived. You must have seen who brought it. I tell you, I didn't see anybody. And how did it get here? I don't know. Probably somebody's idea of a horrible practical joke. This is a joke? Her wedding ring. This is her wedding ring. Let me see it. It looks like it. She was buried in that ring. Now stop it. It's a good copy, that's all. You're very sure, aren't you? Well, there's one other explanation. And I don't think dear little Mildred could get out of that stone vault. 
from me? Heaven forbid. When you went to the cemetery yesterday, you were a nervous wreck. But when you came back... Yes? What did you really find? You really want to know? Yes. Someone had filled in the date of my death. What? That's carrying a joke too far. That's what I thought. Particularly as today is my appointed time. You're kidding. You know I'm not. I... You think that... Oh, come on! You put that card in with the others. You sent that wreath. What about the music? Now, let's not forget the music. I suppose I brought Mildred back to play for you. You were upstairs when I heard it. Does that suggest anything to you? I can't even play chopsticks! It's the same plan you thought up to drive your sister out of her mind. The music, the funeral wreath. When does the coffin appear, Lydia? Stop it! Why did you choose today's date? Did you think I dropped dead from fright when I walked into that tomb and saw it? You are sick. That'd leave you with a clear field, wouldn't it, Lydia? All Mildred's money and no one to remind you how you got it. You know what I think? I think you planted the card and the wreath and the rest of it to punish yourself. No, that's not what happened. All right. Then there's one other possibility. And darling, I don't believe in ghosts. Like a dark reflection in a mirror. If I go to her and face her, I can destroy her once and for all. Now listen, you've been drinking too much. Go into your room and I'll get you something to make you sleep. Shut up! <laughs>
My wreath. Eric, it's all in your mind. Come on, let's get out I of here. I tell you, I see it. Eric, come out of there, please. Well, he wasn't the only one. It must have been quite a party. No, no, I wasn't. Miss Adler, you smell like you've bathed in the stuff. The bottle broke. How? He said he heard music. Mildred. I tried to tell him it was just his imagination that the dead can't come back. But he wouldn't listen. He shoved me. That's when the bottle broke. Then I ran down after him. He was standing in the doorway. Just staring at it. Staring at what? He said it was, it was a funeral ring with his name on it and a coffin. Coffin? I tried to stop him from going in. The door slammed shut. I couldn't get in. I heard him screaming, but I couldn't get in! You say there was a coffin right there? <laughs> he must have been so terrified. He, he went right through the window. Uh, that's quite a story. It's the truth. You see, he was sick. He had a crazy idea that he was responsible for Mildred's death. And, and, and he was trying to punish himself. A coffin there? You've got to believe me. Not until you tell us the truth. But I am telling you the truth! You fought with him. You pushed him. No, no! We found this piece of lace in the button of his coat. He tore it from your dress when he fell, didn't he? Uh, 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 all right, all right. We'll, we'll get the truth when you sober up. No, 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 wait. You gotta believe me. You know, he, he was coming down here because... Listen. You hear it? What? It's Mildred. She's... 